and welcome to the November episode of Spartan Sports Central. We have a special episode ahead for you. We welcome Stafford head football coach Ken Savannah, Stafford band director Rod Rodriguez, and Stafford girls basketball coach Mark Spivey. The player profile this week is Stafford swimmer Geraldine Velasquez. Welcome to the show, Coach. How you doing? Good, good. And um, this is a very special episode because this is y'all's first time in the playoffs in three years. Uh, yeah, two years. This is the third year. Uh, we're so 16, 17, being the 18. the first since 2016, making right. it that year. So, right. um, But um, you guys really finished strong, winning five, winning your last three and then five of six. Yeah, so we, were, we were heavy loaded at the top of our district, of our schedule. We played uh, four schools that were really good. All of them are still in the playoffs. Uh, one of them is in the top five. One team is in the top 15, and then uh, St. Thomas is like the number two seed over at uh, in Taps. Okay. So we we were heavy loaded on the top of you know, the schedule. So I looked at the um, schedules of those teams. They're combined 30 and 10, and then if you look at our schedule, we played out of 10 teams, we played seven um, playoff seven teams. Seven playoff teams, right? That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, I we ne we're not going to schedule down. Uh, not long as I'm here, we're going to always schedule teams that are, that are make us bring our level up. Did that help you make the playoffs in your opinion? I think it helped us down the stretch. Um, it, it definitely helped us against Navasota with the three point loss. Uh, we knew how to, that the next week we got to be ready. We got to be ready to go. We couldn't stand there and just, you know, belong, prolong the issue. We had to be ready to go. So you have a new defensive coordinator. He was a familiar face to Spartan fans, but he's new at defensive coordinator Q Silva. How big was it getting him, you know, back into the program? Well, it was big because what he brings. Uh, he was um, here when I got here uh, seven years ago, and he was uh, very integral to our staff then. And then he, he wanted to come back, had an opportunity to come back. And what he brought is he knows how we do things or like to do things, and the, the kids love him. Um, and uh, he's a very detail-oriented guy, he, the, very meticulous about how he does things and the way things are done. Okay, so um, you're playing Little Cypress Marysville at 7 p.m. Friday over at Madry Stadium in right. Channel View. Right. Of course, that was the place where y'all beat Bridge City to advance to the right. state quarterfinals, but um, a little bit of a surprise that you're playing Little. A lot of people thought it might have been Splendora. Well, at at end of the at week 10, uh, Splendora thought it would be them, and we thought it would be them, and we went out and watched Splendora and Lumberton. But uh, we were also kind of looking at the what ifs, and we saw that you know the, any a combination of certain wins and certain losses, we would end up playing. We could end up playing Lumberton, or we could end up playing who we have, Little Cypress. Do you know much about them at this point? Uh, seen them once. Um, they're they're big time quarterback. They they throw the ball around. A uh, very scrappy team on defense and. Um, they have two really good outside receivers. Okay. Yeah. And then um, we don't want to look ahead too far, but in the next round you could possibly get Kilgore. You played them, beat them three years ago in the second right. round. Right. What kind of matchup would that be? Well, Kilgore is a good program. They've been winning ever since we played them in 16. Um, they're consistent. They're going to always be, you know, well coached. And they have, they have a good group of kids, so uh, it'll be a big challenge for us. But backing up to the LCM game, what are the keys to the game for you guys to win? I think we've got to play uh, well in all three phases. We've got to be very good in special teams. Offensively, we've got to be able to move the ball and execute what we do. And then defensively, we've got to be able to stop them and get them off the field. So you've been in the playoffs, obviously, at Strake as an assistant, defensive coordinator at Strake, um, defensive coordinator here at Stafford. This will be your first time as a head coach. Does it feel any different in any way? Not right now. I mean, my big, you know, you don't really have time to stop and look at it. Right yeah. now, my biggest concern is getting our game plan together, making sure everything is together, all, all everything's in the right place, and we're doing the right things to help us be successful. So I hadn't really thought about the fact that, you know, whether I was an assistant or whether I was a head coach, I got a job to do, and that's what we're trying to do. And then you have 17 seniors who've obviously meant a lot to the program. Right. Getting to go out there and try to extend their um, high school football careers yeah, at least another week. That that was big for us. You know, one of our goals were, you know, get through 
the, the regular season and make it to the playoffs. And then the other goal is to be playing at Thanksgiving. And then if you're playing at Thanksgiving, to be ready to play into December. So uh, it was, we, we fell short last year, had kind of the same list of goals. And uh, those kids, there were a lot of those kids that came around on Friday and was glad to see these, this group make it because we knew we could get back. We just, you know, we stomped our toe a couple of times and didn't get a chance to get in last year, but we were able to get it done this year. Mm -hmm. So um, what's the mood with the kids like right now? Are they pretty fired up for this game? Yeah, they, they are. Um, we would we'll rid them this morning and we talked about what we needed to do to be successful. And um, all of them are, are fired up. You know, some of them have, have never been. Uh, the, actually, the group that's seniors this year, those 17 guys, were freshmen. Yeah, some of them played at that Some of them got a chance yeah. to play in the playoff games, and they're getting a chance to get back. You know? And then you have a quarterback who has playoff experience. Yes, too. Cam has playoff experience over at Dulles. And what about your receiver from, um, transferred in? Is he? Uh, Ty, they made the playoffs last year at, okay. uh, at a, a, a Leaf, so. Okay, so yeah. some guys with playoff experience. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a couple guys. Uh, like I say, those, those guys that are seniors, uh, most of those guys got a chance to travel, and some of them got a chance to play a little bit during that, the last playoff run. And then we had these two guys that come in who come in for program for that uh, playoff experience. All right, thanks, Coach, and good All luck right. in the playoffs. All righty. All right, next up is Stafford swimmer Geraldine Velasquez. Geraldine Velasquez is one of the top swimmers for the Stafford High swim team. She is this month's player profile. This is 6 a.m. at the Stafford pool. Well, actually, it's 7 a.m., but work with me here. Because 6 a.m. at the Stafford Pool is when the Stafford swim team practices, and so does the subject of this month's player profile, Geraldine Velasquez. Well, first, I feel comfortable swimming in the water. I feel like swimming is a good sport to lose weight and to get better at other physical things like running, because swimming like builds up your lungs, like it helps you like breathe better and whatnot. And I just, I just like water. Swim team head coach Chris Rhodes writes, the motto of the Stafford swim team is never quit. Geraldine Velasquez embodies this statement. This is Geraldine's fourth year as a varsity swimmer. Four years ago, she was a young 15 year old beaming with determination. She always came to practice hungry, to learn, and improve. Over the years, her times have gotten faster by over 39%. The last meet we had, which was on a Thursday, last week on a Thursday, I forgot the date, but it was a good meet because my relay lost 10 seconds in their uh, time. Yeah. What I plan to do after graduating graduating is to go to Wharton and get into the pre-veterinary course so I can get my associate's degree. Coach Rhodes continues, she's a natural leader and can accomplish what tasks lay in front of her. I am proud to be her coach and part of her life. Yes, I would recommend going on the swim team because the swim team is like a family of people and it's just good and the coach is like really good. For Spartan Sports Central, this is Randall Williams. Thank you, Randall, for that excellent segment. Next, we go to Stafford High Band Director Rod Rodriguez. Rod Rodriguez and his Stafford High Band will perform at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans on New Year's Day 2020. Welcome to the show, Rod. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me here. All right, so this has been, you know, people around town have known about this, that you guys are, you know, playing in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, first, can you kind of just give me some background on how this happened and how you found out about this opportunity? It was very kind of unique. I, you know, I get a lot of emails saying, you know, hey, come do this, came, come perform here, you know, or you've been invited to perform here. And usually it's just a gimmick to where you have to go online and submit tapes and everything. And this lady, you know, she kept on emailing me and I just kept on deleting the emails and 
she emailed me and she goes, Rod, open up your email. And I was like, mm, this is something different. So I opened it up and I called her and she says, you're invited to perform at the Sugar Bowl. And I was like, okay, what do we have to do? And she goes, show up. And so she, they found us online, the committee selected us, and they said, you're one out of eight in the nation that's going to Sugar Bowl. So that's how it kind of landed in our lap. Okay, and then you made it clear from the onset of this invitation that you would only want to go if all of your band members, which how many do you have now? We have 191, or 90, 193 going right going, now. Going, but members of the band total. 235. 235, so you wanted each of them not that they're all going, because some have opted out, but at least right. have the opportunity to go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, in order to do that, you had to raise a considerable amount of money. Tell us about that. Yeah, it, it was a big thing. We've gone uh, door to door, knocking on uh, everybody's door we could, all the businesses asking for money. And it's, it's really hard because a lot of the businesses here in Stafford, you know, you have to go through and punch the button and they have to say, well, who are you? And then you have to explain and then you get to go into their office. And so we spent the summer trying to raise funds and um, we raised about $30,000 and then Miss Alice Chen City Council came along and she raised 45000 A lot of the businesses would let her through the door when they wouldn't let us through the door because she's a city councilman. And so as of today, we've raised uh, $75,000 and tonight oh, wow. we're supposed to get another $10,000 check. So it'd be a total of $85,000 raised for the students to go to the Sugar Bowl. What does it mean to, to your band program to be able to do that? Oh, this is, this is the hierarchy, I think, of our band program. We've, we've done a lot of things, uh, but to go perform in front of 80,000 students or 80,000 spectators in the Dome and then also, you know, just go into New Orleans and, and march down the parade. Uh, the kids have never been in a parade like that to where it's going to be, you know, wall-to-wall -wall people. Okay, so when did you arrive here in Stafford? I've been here uh, 15 years. And then tell me about how it was when you arrived, like the size of the band then. <laughs> I, I, I was invited by an ex-principal and she didn't lie to me. She called me one, you know, one morning and she goes, um, I have a band program that needs help. I was like, okay, you know, it, it can't be that bad. I showed up, we had 36 in the high school band my first year. Um, and it was, it was really hard because a lot of them couldn't read music. And so we had to start from ground up just building. And, you know, 15 years later, we now have 235 in the high school band program and over 600, uh, 6 through 12. Oh, wow. So what has that meant to watch that growth, you know, to kind of preside over that growth? It, it's been great. I mean, because, you know, a lot of people said, you know, why do you have such a big band program? And I credit to, you know, in Stafford, we allow kids to do everything. They can play. I got people that come out of halftime that are in varsity football. I have uh, cheerleaders. I have dancers. They all still can participate in band and do other activities and I think that's the strength of our program. They're allowed to do so many other things. And then congratulations, you got straight ones last month at the UIL competition down in Canado. Yes sir, yes so sir. So tell me about that competition. Uh, that's, that's a big pinnacle for us because if we don't get ones at that contest then we can't qualify to get sweepstakes. And a sweepstakes rating is getting a one in marching, a one in concert, and in sight reading. And so we're, we're almost there. We've gotten our ones in marching. Now we just next semester get ones in sight reading and concert season. All right, so I know a lot of the focus has been on the UIL and then the Sugar Bowl trip, of course, but what are some of your future plans for the band? Uh, future plans, I really have not thought a lot about it. Uh, I know I have picked our show for next year. I've already started uh, our marching show for next year because next year is an area state year for us. So we have a chance to qualify for area and then hopefully, you know, go on to state. We've been uh, one away the last two years, and now I'm hoping you know we can break that and actually make it to state. So I guess that's our big, biggest next endeavor that we have. Okay. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. All right. Next up is girls basketball coach Mark Spivey. Welcome back. Coach Spivey is the Stafford girls basketball coach entering his third year with the program. He's led the Lady Spartans to the playoffs each of the past two seasons. Welcome back to the show, Coach. Thank you, Mike. How you been? Good. How are you? Good. Good. All right. So um, you had a season opener the other day on Friday. You guys played Kip Academy, 57 mm -hmm. to 23. That's a big win for the program. Yeah, we were excited about that. We got a lot of young kids. We wanted to see what they were made of, and you know, after graduating eight seniors, I was kind of skeptical, skeptical of how these kids would perform, but they did pretty good the other night. A win is a win, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I know there's a game coming up, but by the time the people see this, mm -hmm. that game against Spring Woods will be over. So we're going to talk about the tournament you have coming up at 
down at West Columbia, and then yeah. you go to Brenham, yeah. and then you go to the bowling tournament. Mm -hmm. Not bowling like the sport, but bowling, B-O-L-I-N-G, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. So t tell me about those upcoming games. The game against Springwoods, I'm playing against a good friend of mine. I've played her, you know, for the last seven, eight years over at uh, Springwood, Louise Madison. Okay. And we have, a, like, a little friendly rival that we go, you know, back and forth. And, you know, we had some success against Springwoods. You know, Springwoods is a 6A school. Mm -hmm. And so I try to get my kids some pretty good competition early so okay. we can see what they're made of. And we fared well against uh, Springwoods the last few years. Uh, I think we have a, a winning record against them. So I kind of measure... Uh, the talent level by what we do early and, and it's supposed to help us get better for you know our district which seems to be you know a little less competitive than uh, 6A but they're still competitive at least and the, the tournaments are good tune-ups for our kids get a lot of games played in and let you know see a lot of kids do what they do and then we can get a true feel about you know who's going to be a part of the starting rotation who the, the reserves are going to be doing those tournaments you go there and play like four games in, in two days Oh, wow. And, and the competition is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then um, what about the returning talent? You have kids that were on the team last year that mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. not playing this year. I got, I got a couple of returning, one returning starter, then one returner who was a six, six girl, six man, you know. Mm -hmm. And those two have, have played uh, in parts with, with the varsity team for the last three years. Uh, Brianna Clark is a junior, and uh, Brianna Richardson is a junior. And they both bring um, knowledge and understanding of what I want them to do on the floor. So they're, they're natural leaders. They've always been. You know, they were with a group of girls over the eighth grade at Stafford who uh, I went undefeated in district. And uh, we have one more piece to that puzzle. We're trying to coerce back playing with us again. That's Denisha Pastor. But, um, so do you have any seniors? We have one senior, and that's Renata Conway. Okay. And she um, um, didn't play hardly at all last year. But she's been in the program um, all three years since I've been here. You know, she's about like five foot two, five foot three, okay. and she's you know she hustles as, as as well as anybody on the team. But she didn't get a, a lot of playing time last year because we had like seven guards, and she plays a guard. And then your seniors from last year are they going on to play anywhere this year? Yeah, uh, our um, MVP, district MVP, Shanta Thomas. Is at UT uh, Odessa Permian. Okay. And so I uh, can't wait to get some news on her. Hoping to go catch a couple of games. You know, that's a long way, but yeah. you know, maybe it's they'll worth come going. closer this way. Yeah, yeah. And, and then Ch is Chelsea playing? Chelsea is not playing. She decided to, you know, forego basketball and uh, she's at Texas Tech. Oh, okay. Yeah, but she had, you know, dozens of offers to go play. So not too far from Odessa then? No, I guess. not yeah. far at all. Mm -mm. And they can. I guess go to if uh, she chooses to do so to go watch some of those games. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I know it is kind of a young team. What is uh, what are some of the things you worked on in the off season? Did a lot of strength and conditioning. Um, we we are small. We're, we're a tiny uh, team. We don't have a lot of muscle, so we're gonna have to rely on quickness and and speed to you know get to positions quicker than than our competitors. Uh, but Collectively, this group of talent is probably the, the best I've ever had. Oh, wow. You know, because they shoot well, they defend well, and now since our two superstars are gone, everybody gets a chance to showcase what they can do. Because last year, last couple of years, we had to, we depended on Shanta, depended on Chelsea, and the offense kind of went through them. But this year, we have if I put five girls on the court, they all can score. And what are your goals for this season? Again, the win district. You know, our goals aren't, sh aren't, aren't short just because we graduated eight seniors. Okay. I think we'll be in the mix. Um, last so, Campo's pretty tough. You think you can beat them this year? El Campo's going to be tough. Okay. They're going to be tough. Uh, Size-wise, we just don't match up against them. You know, but you never know. That's why you play the game. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the last couple of years, we weren't picked to be in the, in the playoffs at all. You know, my first year, we weren't even chosen in the top four. Then last year, the same disrespect. But we ended up, my first year, being out of first place one game. And then last year, you know, we finished second to El Campo. So as long as, so that's okay. As long as they keep disrespecting you, that's something that your kids can prove. Yeah, and yeah. Go out and prove the the, um, mm. the naysayers wrong. I guess. Yeah, we like being yeah. a, we like being on the dog, flying yeah. under the radar. But um, like I was uh, telling um, some of my friends, you know, this is the year 
for anybody in the district to try to get us because the next couple of years are going to be really, really good. Got okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we look forward to that. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Coach. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Well, that concludes our show. We appreciate you tuning in this week. This program was produced on the Stafford campus of Houston Community College.